Excuse me, getting so used to this. <laughs> okay, one more indication that our Republican Senate colleagues are not focused on the COVID crisis, but on other diversionary issues. Witness Leader McConnell's speech, which I'll have something to say about. The Republican chairman of the Homeland Security Committee will hold a hearing tomorrow designed to slander the family of the president's political opponent, delving into a Kremlin-concocted conspiracy theory that has no truth and fell over like a dud in the impeachment hearing. And last night, the chairman of the Judiciary Committee announced that his committee will soon consider subpoenas related to another conspiracy theory pushed by President Trump this time to try and rewrite the history of Russian interference in the 2016 election to match the fantasy in President Trump's head. And what does Leader McConnell devote most of his floor remarks to today? That wild conspiracy theory aimed at somehow smearing the fine reputation that President Obama has well deserved. It's amazing. That was the bulk of the speech. Leader McConnell, stop listening to President Trump and his wild theories and listen to the American people. We need action. We need action now. Every day, every week, and now almost every month, we wait. The recession gets deeper and worse. More people are unemployed. More people lose their jobs. More small businesses are in jeopardy. And we're talking about some wild theory because President Trump two days demanded it when everyone knows the president's penchant for truth is at a bare minimum, as exemplified by his hydro, hydroxychloroquine comments last night. Wow. This is unbelievable. In the midst of historic unemployment and economic and health tragedy, Senate Republicans are using their majority to simply block and tackle for the president's re-election campaign. Senate Republicans are using their majority not to tackle the COVID crisis, but to block and tackle for the president's re-election campaign. In the midst of a public health crisis, Senate Republicans are diving headfirst into the muck to smear the family, the family of the president's political opponent. It's such a gross misuse of the power of the majority. We were sent here to do the nation's business. At the moment, that means helping our constituents through a time of immense challenge and large hardship. But Senate Republicans are using their committees to hold fishing expeditions dictated by the president's Twitter feed, which even his supporters don't usually believe. If anyone doubts this is about politics, if this is about Senate Republicans doing the bidding of President Trump's personal political agenda, just remember what House Minority Leader McCarthy said before the last presidential election. Leader McCarthy went on Fox News and bragged the Republicans put together a Benghazi Select Committee to bring Hillary Clinton's poll numbers down. And now Senate Republicans are using the same playbook to smear President Trump's political opponents once again. It will not work. The American people know there's a crisis. They know that the Republicans are doing nothing right now. They know that this is political folderol to please President Trump but not solve America's problems. And rightfully, many Americans are just furious. Senate Republicans using their majority to pursue the president's political agenda in a time of national crisis. The president is tweeting cons insane conspiracy theories, demanding that his water carriers on Capitol Hill make them look legitimate. Instead of focusing on testing capacity and policies to safely reopen our country to help the so many individuals and businesses that are in need, the president is telling the press that he's taken an unproven treatment, hydroxychloroquine, for a disease he doesn't have. And that is reckless. Please, citizens of America, don't take hydroxychloroquine 
as a prevention for COVID. It is not. Medical experts have said it is not. Remember, it is risky. The FDA has said it has risks. This is a medicine that experts say at best may not be effective in treating or preventing COVID-19 and at worst causes serious heart problems in patients with certain conditions. It's astonishingly, astonishingly reckless. I don't know why the president did it. Maybe he has family or friends who stand to benefit from the popularity of this drug. It wouldn't be unlike the president that someone called him and said, this is a great drug, a friend of his, and he just talks about it. He has no penchant for research or science or even truth. Just pops into his head. He thinks it sounds good. He thinks it's a diversion from his failures, which are so many, in dealing with COVID. So he just says it. He doesn't care if it hurts people. But I do know this. <clears throat> If President Trump was focused on testing or the production of PPP or the fashioning of a careful plan to reopen the country instead of pushing quack medicines and inventing new conspiracies, the country would be in far better shape than it is today. And the country knows it. The majority of Americans don't trust the president to handle this crisis. And Senate Republicans just say how high when he says jump no matter how off base, false, or unrelated to COVID, his theories are. Uh, last night, Nancy, the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, called you morbidly obese. I just wanted to know what you had to say in response. Oh, I don't, I don't respond to her. I think she's a waste of time. Mr. President, what are your priorities? What did you tell the senators are your priorities for the future? Well, we have a lot of priorities. The priority we have is a priority for the country and bringing it back. I, I use the expression, Transition to greatness. We're going to have a really good third quarter. It's already happening. You see it. You see what's going on. We're opening up. The states are opening up. Numbers are going down as they open. Look at uh, Georgia. Look at Florida. Look at others. We have states that are opening up and the numbers are going down. Uh, but it's a transition to greatness. It's the third quarter. Then it's going into the fourth quarter. I think the fourth quarter is going to be really good. But I think that above all, next year you're going to have a tremendous year. Now, with all of that being said, to lose lives over this that could have been stopped by China, it should have been stopped by China, is terrible. That a thing like this could have happened to the world long beyond us. You're going to lose millions of people. We're talking about the world. The whole world is being affected by this. It's a terrible thing. A terrible, terrible. Thing. What's your time, Mr. President? What's your timeline? The FDA warned that hydroxychloroquine could cause serious uh, side effects, especially health uh, with heart. With yeah, heart. Yeah. Why is it okay for you to promote the use of this drug when, okay. when you're not a doctor in health, health experts or work? Well, I've, I've worked with doctors, and uh, if you look at the one survey, the only bad survey, they were giving it to people that were in very bad shape. They were uh, very old, almost dead. It was a, a Trump enemy statement. Now. If you look at some of the reports that came out from Italy, that came out from France, that came out from other, a lot of our frontline workers take it because it possibly, and I think it does, but you know, it's, people are going to have to make up their own mind. Plus, it doesn't hurt people. It's been out on the market for 60 or 65 years for malaria, lupus, and other things. Uh, I think it gives you an additional level of safety. But you can ask many doctors are in favor of it. Many frontline workers won't go there unless they have the hydroxy. And so, again, this is an individual decision to make. But it's had a great reputation. And if it was somebody else other than me, people would say, gee, isn't that smart? But we are uh, working on a lot of other things. We have, I'll tell you what, the great medical companies that we have, if you look at what they're doing therapeutically, cure-wise, and the vaccine itself, and the vaccine, I think, is less important than some of the things they're working on. They're working on a cure, and we have more than one doing it, and very advanced. They're working on therapeutics, and they're working on vaccines. Mr. President, there's, there's, been tremendous, there's been tremendous, pro, really tremendous progress. Mr. President, have you talked to uh, senators much about the reforms you'd like to see to FISA so Americans aren't surveilled? Yeah, they have uh, a lot of views on FISA. Uh, I didn't get involved. I purposely said to Mitch, you go do what you want. We'll take a look. We're going to look at FISA. But Nobody's been abused by Pfizer like the President of the United States. Because what the Democrats did and the dirty cops, they're dirty cops. The FBI people are great. I'll bet you go in there, they like Donald Trump. But the top of the FBI, they were dirty cops. They were crooked, bad people. 
and nobody's been abused more than Trump. But you look at General Flynn, you look at so many others, not just that, not just us. Take a look at so many others. Look at what they've done, how they've abused Pfizer. So I'm going to be studying it uh, very much. But the Pfizer process has gone awry. It was used by very dishonest people. It was used illegally. And frankly, the judges on the Pfizer court should do something about it. And maybe they will. Mr. President, are you satisfied with how Republican senators have, res have responded on the Flynn case and on the origins of the Russian investigation? Well, I think on the swing states, you said? No, the Flynn, Flynn case. case. Yeah, on the Flynn case, case uh, General Flynn is a man of great respect. I was with General Milley, the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the other day. I said, do you know General Flynn? He said, yes, I do. He's a fine man. I've known him for 20 years. He's a fine man and a great soldier. General Flynn was treated horribly. General Flynn was treated illegally. These people, they broke the law. They broke the law. What they've done to General Flynn should never happen. What they've done to the presidency and what they've done to this country can never be allowed to happen again to our country. And despite all of that has been done, everything that's been done, we've had one of the greatest presidencies ever. We have never, I don't think anybody, Mitch, I think we can say it with a surety, nobody's accomplished what we've accomplished in a relatively short period of time, a three-year period of time. Nobody's been able to do that. When you look at rebuilding our military, regulations at a level that nobody's come close to, we've cut regulations, the biggest tax decrease in history, you look at all of the things that we've done, all of the things we've done on health care, with the individual mandate, with pre-existing conditions, nobody's done anywhere close to what we've done. But despite that, if you look, despite an illegal witch hunt, and that's what it was, it was a hoax, it was a witch hunt, the Russian thing was a made-up, fabricated story, just like they went to Congresswoman Kelsey Gabbard. I don't know her at all. And they said, you're a Russian agent. I don't know her, but I know she's not a Russian agent. Then they went to Dr. Jill Stein of the Green Party. They said she's a Russian agent. I don't know her at all. I know she's not a Russian agent. These people are sick. Pelosi is a sick woman. She's got a lot of problems, a lot of mental problems. We're dealing with people that have to get their act together for the good of the country. Okay, thank you very much.